Weekend at 101. Center Wellington's best music. My station. My music. Ah, the Ground of 101, you listen to Swap Talk. It's a live show every single uh, Tuesday night. Let's, uh, yeah, every single Tuesday night. You just think about I it. For a minute. <laughs> you know, you've been coming here every Tuesday night for the last little while. You think yeah. I kind of get it. Kind yeah, of yeah, that's right. Well, you don't actually leave. You just stay. I'm here. Yeah, here that's right. Week. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Jacqueline, how are you? I'm awesome. Welcome to the first, this is the first time, um, I could say first time caller. No, it's, it's uh, uh, first time presenter. Thank you I'm for definitely a first time presenter. Aramosa Physiotherapy. How long you folks been down there? Well, we've been in Alora for about 15 years. Actually. Now you're across from the quarry, is that right? Uh, yeah, across from the quarry, right beside the Raceway Stone Building on the corner. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm yeah, thinking, up yeah, on the top, up, right? Up on the yeah. Top. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you go, go around the, the roundabout. And, yeah, absolutely. And you go, yeah. yeah, nice, beautiful stone building. Oh, yeah, you very guys are nice. in. Yeah, yeah. yeah now, right have you always been in that building? No, Jackie, we when we first opened in Alora, we were across the street in a smaller plaza, and then we um, uh, moved into that building when oh, it was ready. Yeah, nice. lots of room in there. Yeah. It's a yeah, great no, location. Yeah, we love it. Yeah. Lots of windows. Yeah, because that's nice a, a relatively new building. Uh, the it whole was a new building that building was built, thing. yeah. Well, very good. you got lots of space in there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. No, we're, we're really happy there. One of the things that we're going to talk about, a few things that we're going to cover, but I, I always, and, and I'm one of the typical people that I can blame for this, is that I, when I think of physiotherapy, it's to me, it's like, okay, I've done something. I've hurt something. I've damaged something. And the doctor says, you need physiotherapy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you had the frozen shoulder, all that kind of stuff. But when I look at some of your stuff, you're talking about, preventative physiotherapy and i don't know how many people do you think think that way about physiotherapy well i don't think a lot of people do think prevention when it comes to traditional physiotherapy and and i don't want to minimize that getting treatment when you have something going on is really important because in reality a lot of the times when clients come in and tell us their story whether it's a frozen shoulder story or a rotator cuff tendonitis story They usually have that story that, oh, well, this has been going on for four or five or six months. And then most of the time it'll be something simple like they aren't sleeping at night anymore because every time they lay on their shoulder they have all of this pain. And that that tends to drive people either to their family doctor or they come and see us directly. So when I think about prevention, I also want to think about early intervention. So when you have that ache or that pain or you know your body, you know that you used to be able to move in a certain way and now you're finding that you're not able to do that, I really think it's important uh, that people think about the resources that they have because it's way easier to treat these things if we can catch them in the early I was just saying, You're making it, I guess, yeah. I mean, well, you, you hit it, oh, it's going to clear up. It never does. And and then I'm thinking it's probably like the inflammation and everything. You're just making it worse. So by the time we get to you, often, <laughs> you've got a bigger often, job. Yeah, often that is the case. And I uh, everyone wants the rule of how long they should wait, whether it's yeah. shoulder pain uh, or yeah. low back pain. Uh, I really think that if you've had something going on that is lasting five to seven days and you're not finding that it is getting a lot better, then I really do think that you need to use the resources that are out there. So uh, shoulder pain, low back pain, knee pain, so many of those joints will have that story where it was more of a gradual onset. Um, Mm -hmm. And if we can get in at that time, then we're... And and are you, uh, like, uh, it's kind of like, do you go, it's like a broken leg and you set the leg and you're good. Uh, when you go to physiotherapy, I sense it's more of a team thing. It's like you're going to show the patient how to do something yeah, yeah, to I get better. You're absolutely thing. right. Uh, physiotherapy as a profession has a real active component. So we, we definitely do what we call manual therapy where we're touching people, we're helping maybe joints move, um, we're stretching tissue. We're massaging tissue. Um, But if we really want to get you to the next level, and certainly if you look at the research that is out there on so many different areas of your body, we actually know the best thing for almost everything is exercise. And I do think that when people get the specific direction that they need and they learn what exercises are going to be the most appropriate in the early stages, and certainly the exercises that are needed after things are moving well, there's also great studies that show, well, we can actually teach you um, exercise 
exercises on how to prevent this from coming back. So oh. I, I think that that's really um, a unique feature of physiotherapy. It's certainly unique about our practice that everyone that leaves, I feel, has a good plan of not only have we helped them, say, with their initial pain, but we've given them the tools and the education that they understand that whole process. And, you know, we want them to come back and see us, but maybe for yeah. a different problem, not necessarily um, because they're having ongoing problems with the same. Yeah, that's interesting because I, I find that, uh, you know, you go for that injury and uh, there's so many things that, uh, you know, the little muscles and the tendons around it type of thing that if you're working and building all those up, less likely to come back with the problem kind of thing. But, uh, well, but, exactly. But the layperson has no idea no, what, and, what tendons and muscles to work no, on and, at and all. And I think right? that, um, you know, I often talk about physios as being body mechanics and mm. because really there's not a joint or a muscle in your body that we can't influence and rehab and help you get that back on your path. But I do think that there are so many areas of the body that people don't realize that we treat. So uh, you heard my little introduction earlier, and I always like to throw out some what I call maybe not so boring joints that yeah. people are often a bit surprised that physios treat. So, you know, shoulder, back, knee pain, I think everyone relates yep. to a physio yep. that... And I hope that they relate to physio as being a resource because those are great joints that we could really help with. But... All of that, what you talked about, influencing uh, tendons, influencing muscle, influencing pain, uh, we take all of those same concepts that we apply to shoulder or back pain and we um, use it in our pelvic health treatment. And people will say, are you saying public health? No, are you saying public no, health? No, but like, I saw this and yeah. I'm thinking, now wait a minute, because sometimes, and you know, I'm getting up there in, in my, my age, and you go, well, you know, urinary problems, that's, you, ah, you're old. You just kind of got to deal with that. And, and in fact, you watch the advertisement, they say, well, yeah, you should be buying these depends yeah, and all this yeah, kind of stuff, Yeah, the advertisement, right? I mean, there are lots of people commoditizing the market yeah, of health care. but you're saying yeah. no, no, there is no. pelvic exercises that can I'm, Really Absolutely. Help with same. That. And, you know, I, I think it's interesting if I compare male and females, mm -hmm. because females in general, our society has and our medical system has told females that it is a common problem. So, so common that it's really become something that most females just think is normal, yeah. that this is going to happen, you know, right. when I have a baby or this is going to happen when I get older or I'm experiencing menopausal symptoms. All of these things are thought, well, there's nothing I can do. Uh, but these people come in with those same stories uh, that they will tell, like the person with shoulder pain that started off maybe with a little bit of urinary leakage and then over time now they can't play ball hockey or now they can't uh, run anymore and it got oh, progressively worse wow. and worse to the point that you know sometimes people remove themselves from those social activities yeah. that they really like doing sure, yeah. so they finally make it to our doorstep and when they realize that there there is treatment and that they do get better while they're happy, they're often a little bit frustrated that that resource maybe wasn't brought to their attention. Um, so I do think that people need to realize that as a physiotherapy profession, we've got this incredible knowledge that we're going to take all of that same knowledge the same way that we would rehab your knee after a total knee replacement we can look at your pelvic floor muscles. And wow. And not, not say, oh, you got to have a big operation to fix yeah. that. No. Yeah. And, and some, I mean, yeah. we're not going to always be able to fix everyone. Yep. There are a lot of things um, in that pelvic floor uh, diagnoses that often do need to go on for surgery. But even when we think about surgery as it relates to, say, a prolapse surgery or what is often called a bladder lift surgery, or even men, um, when we think about if they have to have their uh, prostate removed uh, yeah. for cancer treatment, right. we actually know that those people that come in for pelvic floor physiotherapy will have better surgical outcomes. So sometimes oh. we can't actually fix the problem. Yeah. But if we can make your post-surgical outcomes better, then, you know, your quality of life is better. So before, this is interesting, so before you're going for the surgery... Yeah. Oh, see, I don't think many people would think no, that I, way I, at all. I think a lot of people don't realize that. And I mean, that's the same the same science is out there that looks at um, the effectiveness of prehab. That's yeah. what it's kind of called yeah. um, on total hip and total knees. People that get taught those exercises beforehand and have the confidence and the really the knowledge of how to do them properly when they do go on to have those total hips or total knees 
they have better outcomes. And to me, that makes common sense. Well, it does. if you think about, you know, okay, I'm going to the hospital. I want to build up my strength. Everybody kind of thinks that way, you know, because I'm going in for an operation. So I just want to be stronger because I'm going to be a bed rest or whatever. So why not go the extra mile yeah. here and, and get now into more uh, of a concentrated area that you're going to work on? Makes sense. Yep. Yep, yep, and I, I, I do, uh, I see the results all the time, so I, I, you know, I know firsthand that they work, but I'm not the one doing the large-scale studies. These studies are done on, you know, hundreds, 200, 300 people for different diagnoses, and uh, there's not okay. really a study out there when I look at exercise in particular that is not showing positive effects um, for many, many, many diseases and diagnosis. So it's, now, it uh, is Pilates, I never kind of equate to physiotherapy. So how yeah, does that kind of... So Pilates is actually more of a unique form of exercise prescription and we use it a lot um, for the treatment of low back pain and a, oh, lot, okay. a lot of physios will use the concepts of Pilates in general so you might not necessarily be a Pilates instructor, but a lot of the rehab exercises that we would traditionally teach are very similar to Pilates. But in Allura, we actually have a physio that is a certified Pilates instructor. So she has this great tool that she gets to marry with her rehab um, oh, wow. programs. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not just, I mean, this is very connected to physiotherapy. Yeah. That, yeah. And I mean, Pilates definitely is used probably most specifically for back, hip, pelvis complaints. But even from a posture standpoint or um, anyone that wants to increase their core strength or tone their abdominal muscles in more of a rehab setting, uh, it is a really unique tool. And again, it's actually the kind of core of uh, Pilates and the type of exercises is they use a type of strengthening that when you look at specifically low back pain literature, uh, th those are the kind of exercises oh, that wow. we can actually prevent low back pain so now and I saw this uh, con concussions we all know and it's certainly in the last several years have all become very aware of con concussions and uh, you know what we have to do with our kids and how we should prevent not get involved in having concussions but are we are you talking about some way of, of helping prevent concussions well absolutely I mean when we look at uh, injury in sport there are a lot of injuries that we can prevent uh, I mean the most basic thing that I often think about is skiers and downhill racing skiing. Until we put helmets on people, of course, people had very serious accidents. Yeah. So we want to have prevention at all different levels. So when you think about concussion, I think prevention starts with lots of education. We need to make sure that parents and players understand when you are playing a sport that's at risk, where where are the risks and how can we prevent them? If you look at hockey as an example, uh, in Calgary, there's a large uh, Canadian research group out of the University of Calgary. And although a lot of people didn't really love their findings, they certainly found that if they moved body checking to an older age group, we actually saw less concussions happen. Oh, they didn't like it because they're going to take it out of the ju the junior sports yeah, area. Yeah, I think that yeah. a lot of people yeah. saw that as a kind of a component of hockey that they didn't want to see move. But when you see that action immediately translate into less concussions, you can see yeah, how there's the prevention value happens. Right there. But the other piece about concussions is the education component of both parents, players, athletes being able to recognize a concussion and how it can happen. You know, we all... All, almost all of us will quickly identify if someone hits their head and is laying on the ice unconscious, of course they have a concussion. No yep. one, no one's going to argue with that as a diagnosis. Um, but unfortunately, in currently in medicine, we have absolutely no way to run an x-ray, do an MRI, to do any sort of investigation to confirm the diagnosis of oh, a concussion. That. Hmm. So that means we have to look at what was the athlete's symptoms? What did the incident look like? If the incident looked like the person hit their head or the person looked dizzy or was not themselves, we all have to have the confidence to say that, well, that is a concussion, even though I can't confirm it with a spe special okay. medical test. And then we need to have the education to understand how to manage and treat that concussion. So removing the player from the actual game, yeah. not being concerned. You know, I drove all the way to Ottawa. It's a hockey tournament. He wants to play tomorrow, too. Yep. Well, that was a pretty serious incident. His teammates felt it was a serious incident. He said he had some symptoms 
the simple symptom of dizziness, which I think a lot of people think, well, everyone feels dizzy after. Yeah, that, sure. That, that'll yeah. just go yeah. away. But yeah. that, when you look at dizziness and you look at the science of concussion to date, dizziness is one of the biggest predictions of a concussion. So we have to really be um, paying attention to those symptoms and being confident with removing the player and then knowing when it's safe to return the player. Because there's lots of really good recommendations that come from international organizations. They don't come from our clinic or this clinic or that doctor. They come from a big group of scientists that's, that give us the recommendation that this is where this the is knowledge the norm. is. This is yeah. So yeah. We, should, we should follow those protocols and you know make sure that we're realizing, especially for kids, like these yeah. kids are under the age of 18. They've got a full life to lead. We don't want to throw them back oh, into yeah. a, a... But it's a, it's a behavioral change. Uh, it you know, and the parent, It's funny, a parent that would love their child, uh, want them to succeed in sports, uh, but, you know, that line, of, ooh, but if I take them out of the game, you know, they don't get the but chance. But I've been in that end. position. You know, my son loves hockey, and when he was younger and he had a concussion... Of course, I, in my heart, thought he can't go back to playing, but he is equally as convincing that he wants to play. So, you know, you do have to rely on the medical people around you. My ear was like, yeah, you just go play. It's part of being a man, you know. You can't speak, you can't walk, but you go play, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, a little behavior change. I'm I'm convinced that we've moved away from that. Oh, my heavens. (laughs) Yeah, no, you look at the steps that we've taken and, you know, I mean, everybody now with their kids and that would would first of all think, oh, concussion, i got to do something about this. Yeah, at least have it assessed and get a professional opinion. a good step forward in I there. think so so uh you've opened up a whole bunch of new doors for us here and, and more of it so. for me is the the uh, before you have the injury the prevention aspect you don't have to wait till you you can't move your arm and all that kind of stuff you go beforehand and you can probably get more results if you go early yeah there. i think that anywhere along that spectrum if you have a question if you're not happy with a change that you've noticed i really do think that physiotherapists I use that term body mechanics. That's Definitely. that's what we study. That is where our I think expertise lies and I think all along that spectrum of prevention, treating injuries when they happen and giving people the tools that they can manage and prevent those injuries from happening again. And if people want more information, uh, you're on the corner of uh, Southern. We're around and, the corner. Yeah. We've got a website with all of our locations, and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Lots of ways to connect with us via email and Facebook and Instagram. All of those uh, platforms are out there. Aramosa Fizzafira. Yes. You can look it up and away you go. Thank all you right. very much, man. Thank you for having me. That's Sharon little light on uh, what we all kind of thought some of the stereotypes were on physiotherapy but Jacqueline's kind of opened up some doors that I certainly was not thinking about and uh, you know I think that the story is right here is that don't don't wait <laughs> don't don't wait till it's a terrible problem go early get a diagnosis yeah have it diagnosed at least Rob yeah excellent all right when we come back uh, we're gonna go talk to Tim and Leah yeah we sure are um why rush home when you have Larry Peters on your drive? Center Wellington's best music. The Grand at 101.